This video is going to help you learn about the different levels of the energy pyramid. But before we get started, we have to make a food chain. So let's go ahead and do that. For our producers, we're going to use grass. For our primary consumer, we're going to use a rabbit. For our secondary consumer, we're going to use an owl. For our tertiary consumer, we're going to use a bobcat. For our decomposer, we're going to use some fungi. Before we can put our food chain onto our energy pyramid, we first have to figure out what each level would be labeled. So let's go ahead and do that. Things. First, we need to notice and see that there is an arrow pointing from the sun pointing to the bottom level of the energy pyramid. If you think back to what you know about food chains, the arrow is showing us which way the energy is flowing. So in this example, the sun's energy is going to flow to the bottom level of the energy pyramid. We'll find out what level that is in a second. We know that producers need to gain their energy from the sun. So if we look at this diagram, we see that there is an arrow pointing from the sun to the bottom level of the pyramid. Knowing what an arrow represents in a food chain, we know that the energy is flowing from the sun to the bottom level. So therefore, the bottom level is our producers. The bottom level of our energy pyramid is now labeled producers. We know that our producers will be on the bottom of the energy pyramid because they gain their energy from the sun. Next, we need to figure out what the next level would be. We know that animals can eat plants or producers, and they are known as consumers since they are consuming the plants. They are eating the plants. So they are our first level of consumers, therefore they are our primary consumers. Our second level has now been labeled primary consumers. We know that primary consumers can be consumed or eaten by other consumers, other animals. So that would be our second level of consumers, so they would be our secondary consumers. Now our third level is labeled secondary consumers. We're almost done, but we have one more level left. We know that secondary consumers can be consumed or eaten by other animals. So the top level is going to be our third level of consumers, which would be our tertiary consumers. We have now labeled all levels of the energy pyramid. Again, our bottom level is producers, second level, primary consumers, third level, secondary consumers, and fourth level at the very top, tertiary consumers. From the tertiary consumers is an arrow pointing towards the decomposers. That means that the energy from the tertiary consumers will go towards the decomposers because the decomposers will decompose or break down the tertiary consumers. Now that we have all the levels labeled, let's go ahead and add our food chain. We have now added all of our food chain to the energy pyramid. Our grass are our producers, the rabbit is the primary consumer, the owl is the secondary consumer, the bobcat is the tertiary consumer, and the fungi is our decomposer for this energy pyramid. Now we can go ahead and begin the energy activity. For this activity, we're going to use pinto beans to represent energy. To make calculations easier, we are going to use 1,000 pinto beans. I moved the labels of our levels and each picture of our organisms off to the side so that we would have more room to work with the bean. I have added 1,000 pinto beans to our producer level, the bottom level of our energy pyramid to help us show how energy is transferred from one level to the next. Start us off. Remember, the pinto beans represent energy. Since the primary consumers eat the producers, they are going to gain energy from the producers. So that means that we have to move beans up to the next level to show the transfer of energy. The primary consumers are going to gain 10% of energy from the producers, so we are going to move 100 pinto beans up to the primary consumer level. I have moved 100 pinto beans from our producer level to our primary consumer level. This shows how much energy has been transferred from our producers to our primary consumers after they were consumed. Make sure you notice that there's a big difference between the amount of pinto beans in our producer level compared to our primary consumer level. 
Although I have moved 100 beans to the primary consumer level, I want you to remember that the plants and producers are always receiving energy from the sun. So the producers will always be at 100% energy. This energy pyramid is to show you how energy is transferred after something is consumed. So although one plant might be consumed, the rest of the producers that are still living will always have 100% energy because they are always gaining energy from the sun. Now, we know that secondary consumers will eat primary consumers. That means that the energy from the primary consumers will be transferred to the secondary consumers. So, since 10% of energy is transferred from one level to the next, I am going to move 10 pinto beans up to our secondary consumer level. I have now moved 10 pinto beans from our primary consumer level to our secondary consumer level of our energy pyramid. Next, we need to figure out how many beans we should move to the next level. We know that tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers. Therefore, tertiary consumers will gain their energy from our secondary consumer. We also know that 10% of the energy is transferred from one level to the next. Since we know that only 10% of energy is transferred from one level of the energy pyramid to the other, we are going to move only one bean up to our tertiary level to represent the energy transfer from our secondary consumers to our tertiary consumers. I have moved one bean from our secondary consumer level to our tertiary consumer level. Now our energy pyramid is complete. We can see that the energy has transferred from the producers all the way to the tertiary consumer. But make sure you notice how much energy is transferred from one energy level to the other.